Hey everybody, in case uh, we've never met, my name is Brooks Wolf and I'm the manager of NOC Wilderness Medicine Survival School at Solo Southeast and we're located at the Nanahale Outdoor Center. Um, over my life I've been a guide, an outdoor guide for like the last 10 years where I've done instruction and guiding. I've guided all over the United States, I've guided out in out west in places like the Gunnison, the Green River, Dolores, I've guided all over the Southeast and I've also had the opportunity to lead trips outside of the U.S. to remote areas outside of the country. I'm an advanced EMT. I'm a North Carolina technical rescuer. I'm a swift water instructor. I'm a kayak instructor. And when I'm not working, not teaching, then I'm also a first responder for my county in Swain County, North Carolina. So we have a lot of students that come through our classes. And one of the main questions that they always ask is, what is the first aid, what's the best first aid kit that I can buy? And my answer uh, to those students is always, it's the one that you can build yourself. And the reason why is because uh, my first aid kit, the one that I'm building may not be perfect for, for you or what you're doing. And uh, so we're gonna go through some general principles on how to do that, how to build it. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is what makes a good first aid kit. When I look at first aid kits that you can buy online, a lot of them have a lot of great materials in them, but I never look at the list and think, that's the perfect one that has the exact materials that I want, but they do make a good base. So there's a, a company out there, a lot of people probably heard about that are in the outdoor industry. It's called Adventure Medical Kits. We carry those at the Nanahale Outdoor Center. Um, a lot of other outfitters carry those. If you're a member of uh, Expert Voice or uh, Outdoor Pro Link, um, a lot of people may have access to those if you're, if you're a guy, if you work in the industry, but that can give you a good place to start. Uh, they have a lot of great supplies. It's a great company and they have different types of kits for different situations and that's a really good place to start. But when I build my own, I look for something um, in particular. There's four things that I'm going to look for. One is that the outside of the first aid kit is tough, that it's durable. That's really important as we're out adventuring that the, the kit holds up. The second thing that I look for is that it's waterproof. A lot of the materials we put in there, number one, they're, they could be expensive, and so we want to protect those. But number two is like when we go to use those materials, we want to make sure that they're dry, that um, we can use them. They're still, still sterile if we need to use them for a patient. Uh, the third thing is that it's easy to carry. A lot of the little first aid kits that have handles on the top, they're not really practical for the outdoors. We want to have something that we can stuff into, you know, small enough to stuff into a backpack, or it, if, we're, if it's a big kit, we can strap around our body and we can carry it to have access with our hands to, to do what we need to do. And then the uh, fourth thing that we're gonna look at is we want something that's brightly colored. And so picking out um, a bag or uh, something that's brightly colored so that if we're working on a patient, helping someone, and we lay it down, if it's, if it's a muted color like brown or green, then that might not be the best thing for us. So let me show you an example of, uh, this is my, uh, personal uh, first aid kit. I know it looks big and I'm going to go through the reason why it looks so big, but this is an excellent bag. This is from a company uh, called Watershed and this particular bag, I really love this bag, uh, is because if we look at it, this is called the Go For It and this one has a strap on it and what's really nice about this strap is um, again it's easy to carry if I am uh, walking through the woods and I use this bag as a, as a first responder for my county, this is my personal bag, but I, I use it for that. It's very easy. I can carry it through the woods, um, really easy to use. And some nice features about this bag, extremely, extremely durable. The military uses these bags. Uh, a lot of professional photographers out there who have thousands of dollars of camera equipment uh, trust this bag for their gear and this a lot of outdoor professionals also love these bags. Now this is quite a big bag. Um, this is something that I might would carry if I was doing maybe an expedition or something outside of the country. I might be able to stuff this in the back of like a creek boat or something like that but this is probably a little bit too big for me if I'm uh, trying to backpack. I, I love ultralight backpacking so this is going to be not ultralight. This is way too big. So some other options are there are stuff sacks out there. 
Um, this is my step sack for my medical kit. And this is that rubberized material, has a roll top. You roll this down and you can snap that together and pack that down. Um, when I'm kayaking and if I'm using a smaller boat, like a slicey boat or something like that, this is a great option. It fits right in the back of the kayak. For backpacking, um, here's a great bag, uh, Sea to Summit. This is a really durable material, not quite as waterproof. This model is not quite as waterproof, but it's super lightweight. And so this also has a roll top and packs down really, really small. And again, you can find these at like the Outfitter store at NOC or at, uh, you know, through other, other channels that carry a lot of outdoor gear. So these are all really good, um, really good ideas to, for bags. Very, again, very tough and durable, waterproof, um, easy to carry or easy to stuff in something you're carrying and brightly colored. So as we go through uh, this bag, I'm gonna use this one as the example so that we can kind of walk through everything and talk about the principles of how all of this works. Now, this is a pretty big kit. I'm gonna share with you the reason why I like this and the reason why I use this big kit. So, like I said, this is my, this, I carry this in my car. I use this at home. I use this when I respond to calls in the county as a first responder. And I do take this if I'm going like to, um, you know, going out of the country, going on a, a big type expedition, or this is small enough, this will stuff in the back of a creek boat. But the nice thing about this is if I organize this well, and, and uh, take my time of, of putting this together properly, it's pretty easy to transfer stuff out of this into a smaller kit um, pretty quickly. And that does a couple of things. One is, you know, I work in the outdoor industry. I'm, you know, don't make a ton of money. Um, I, you know, get the good fortune of, of living a life that I love to live, but um, I don't like to buy two, three, four things uh, the same, the same thing. So the, some of these things in this medical kit are quite expensive and um, I can just pull them out really quickly and put them in another bag and build another bag and it takes seconds. It doesn't take very long at all. So let's start to walk through this bag and I'll, and I'll explain to you how I've got this organized. So a lot of this um, organization I've, I've taken from the way they handle it in EMS in the front country. If you see a paramedic or an EMT, they roll up on scene, they open their bag up, and then they have a lot of smaller containers inside that bag, and they're color-coded, and so they might have bleeding control kit in one, in one area. They might have all the supplies they need to maybe start an IV in another bag. We're going to take that same principle and think about how we could build this so that it's easy, easily to access the uh, materials that we need quickly and that we could easily pull things out of here and build another smaller first aid kit if we need to. So right off the bat, I'm just gonna show you what's kind of in here. Um, I use freezer bags. So, um, and then I take um, duct tape and build a little tab at the top. And so all, of, if, you could, if you could look inside this bag, you would see that there's all these little bags that are stood upright with these tabs on the top. And so what this does, it allows me to take a look in the bag and easily find what I need, pull that out in case of emergency. It also does another thing, allows me to pull the things out I need to build this smaller kit for when I want to do some ultralight backpacking. The other thing that I do with organizing this bag, and um, I try to keep some stuff on top, and the things that I keep on top are things I need quick access to, so things that I need in an emergency. And then I break the sections of the bag down. So this first uh, part of the bag is really dealing with trauma. So there's things for uh, splinting, things for taking care of bleeds, uh, more traumatic injuries. In the center here, I've got Ziploc bags full of things that are for medical emergencies. And then over here in this part of the bag are things that I use for like diagnostics. So maybe a, like a glucometer to check someone's uh, um, blood sugar. And so the things that I personally keep on top that I think that I need really quickly in case of emergency, let's just take a look at this. This first one here is pretty easy. Um, if you look at this um, label here, it's uh, PPE. So in an event that we're taking care of a patient, uh, I'm the most important person on the scene, 
and I need to protect myself so that I can take care of someone else. So having gloves, and these just aren't any gloves when you're putting your first aid kit together, you wanna to make sure that you have non-latex gloves. These are nitrile gloves. And again, I keep these right on top. If I see a patient that needs some help, I can get these out. I can don my gloves and my PPE and take care of that patient. Now I ride for, uh, I'm a first responder for my county. Um, I also have a bag that has some additional PPE. Uh, this is, uh, you know, goggles and an N95 mask and a pair of shears. And what's really nice is um, an example of how to do this is you can take one bag that's full of PPE and you can have another bag that you can put in here to close up so that um, you have um, two separate items. I can pull this out really quickly because if I'm, I don't really need this in the back country and I can get down to the stuff that I do need in the back country and put this in that other kit. So um, PPE is really important. I already pulled this one out of the bag earlier as an example. This is uh, soap notes. So this is patient notes. It has things like where you can write down the vitals. This also has a Sharpie pen in it. Uh, the paper that I use for my notes that's in here, uh, you can buy uh, waterproof inkjet paper. And this does really great. It holds up in the rain. It's really, it doesn't tear very easily. And um, with a Sharpie and with this, um, I know that if it's uh, inclement weather, weather's not that great, I can still do a great job of taking care of taking patient notes with a Sharpie in that paper. Also on this pen, on the Sharpie, you'll notice that I have a duct tape here. Uh, always good to have extra duct tape around. The other thing that I have that I usually lay right on top is uh, CPR um, supplies. So my personal preference Again, as we're going through CPR um, supply type stuff is, I know this is kind of bulky, uh, but I really think that this is a, a great thing to have in the back country. So in here, I've got a pocket mask. Um, it has a strap to go around the patient's head. So if we're doing a carry out or something like that, I've got that. And it also has some gloves. And also inside my, uh, with my pocket mask, I have a baby aspirin, which can uh, help in an emergency, somebody's having, uh, have showing signs and symptoms of a heart attack. So I've got all this stuff right on top. It's really easily accessible. I can get to it quickly. If you have somebody else, maybe you're running a trip, you're, you're guiding for someone, and somebody has some type of life-saving uh, medication, maybe it's like an EpiPen or it's an emergency asthma inhaler, all that stuff, you know, we need to, we need to know where it is we need to have quick access to it. All that can kind of sit on top of everything else in your first aid kit. Same thing, same applies here. If I'm uh, taking stuff out of this kit to build a smaller kit, then the stuff that I don't think that I'm gonna really need that much, I put at the bottom in those first aid supplies or the PPE or that life-saving medication all goes on the top of, uh, of that first aid kit. So, those are some ideas about how to organize. Now let's kind of dig in and look at some of the things inside the kit. Um, and again, I'm going to start over on this side. Um, some things that I keep loose in the very end is hand sanitizer. I also have some mild soap in here that's to clean up, to clean wounds, those types of things. And then I keep a uh, space blanket, mercy blanket, uh, to help keep patients warm. Um, you can use a trash bag. I know that's a, a common thing. A lot of people will carry like an outdoor leaf, thick mill trash bag for that. Then uh, starting off, like I said that this is all trauma. And so the first thing I have in here is for splinting. So for splinting, this is kind of a big splint kit that I carry. I might probably remove some of this stuff, but I have some triangle bandages. You can, those usually come in every single first aid kit. And that's what you see, you know, you see people with their arm kind of in a sling and a swath. That's what those are. I've got some extra bits of strings and P-cord. And then here you can see, this is called a SAM splint. It's uh, just uh, a splint that you can use. Uh, if, you, if you take a first aid course, a wilderness first aid course, you can learn how to uh, build a splint without this. So if I was gonna be doing some lightweight backpacking or stuff, this is definitely something that I would, I would drop because um, 
if you if you're wilderness first aid or wilderness first responder or wilderness EMT, then you know how to build this stuff without using the commercial made stuff. So um, having that education, knowing how to do that stuff helps you lighten up your pack as well. So um, so I have splinting materials right behind the splinting materials. I'm going to have some additional things for uh, for uh, trauma. So this is bleeding control. So that's the next thing in this kit. And in here, I've got some gauze. And something that's really cool that I think a lot of people should add to their first aid kit is uh, this material here. It is called uh, Quick Clot. And this is just a brand, but this is a hemostatic agent. So if somebody has a bad bleed, you can put this on the wound and pack the wound with it. And this will stop a bleed, a major bleed. And so this is a, a great thing to have in a first aid kit, and this will stop major bleeds. So I um, highly recommend that. This is a, a Quick Clot is a brand, um, again, uh, NFC Outfitters store, or you can get this um, from a lot of different um, retailers. Uh, right behind that is, of course, once we have the bleeding control, then we're going to have uh, to, to bandage this and to start to clean the, clean the wound out. So I have gauze and we have some rolled gauze in here. So those are really good for building like pressure, pressure dressings and things. And then we have some uh, flat gauze. This is a three inch by four inch gauze. So having some of those things available to be able to, uh, to treat the wound. Then the next thing um, in here is gonna be a uh, el elastic wrap. And this is Coban and then some tape. So uh, this tape is not just regular medical tape. We generally, I, I generally try to put athletic tape, sports tape. It, it holds a lot better than just regular uh, medical tape. And uh, so get the cloth. Um, you do want to make sure it's, it's not really a good idea to, a lot of people think, oh, well, I can just put you know, I've got duct tape with me, so I don't need to carry tape. I can just put tape on. You really need to use something that's meant to go on the skin. Uh, some people have allergic reactions to the adhesives that are in duct tape. So um, having, again, um, if your tape is, uh, is not cloth, it's made out of some other type of material, just making sure that it's, that it's non-latex and that the adhesives are okay to put on skin. So that sports tape, there's a, there's a brand out there that's called Luco Tape. E um, and excuse me, L-E-U-K-O, Luco tape. It's, it's a great tape. A lot of climbers use it, but it's, it's, a, it's an awesome tape to have. The next thing that's in the kit is, um, I call this STI, soft tissue injury. But basically, it's things to be able to clean the wound and to make sure that we do the best we can to keep, uh, keep getting infected. And in here, there are uh, things like uh, a syringe uh, to irrigate. And then this is a great product that I think most people should carry is a tincture of iodine. So this is great. What you wanna do is you can make a really weak solution of this. Um, you can get this at any pharmacy. Sometimes you have to go to the pharmacy counter in order to get it. Uh, they don't, uh, I think it's made in the production of some drugs. So they, you may not be able to find it right on the shelf. But if you can't find it around the shelf, you can just go to the pharmacist and ask for it. And this tincture of iodine, what we want is about a 2% solution. So really, really weak. So 10 parts water to um, two parts of the iodine solution. And it's about two teaspoons in, in, a, in a liter of water. So if you're carrying an algae and it's potable water, drinkable water, you can put a little bit of this in there and um, it'll make like almost like a weak tea solution looking uh, um, uh, thing for, you can use for flushing out wounds, you can use it for cleaning, you can use it as a topical to put on top of things. So that pretty much takes care of all of the things that I have in there for, for trauma. And if you um, take a class, you know how to use all this stuff, you can take care of almost any type of trauma. Like I said, this is my same kit that I used for res first responder in the front country, and I can take care of almost everything with this. Then I get into the next part, which is medical emergencies. So I have some things like electrolyte drink, which is really great for um, you know, dehydration. 
I have some uh, glucose tabs for, uh, excuse me, glucose gel for diabetic emergencies. That's a, a really good thing to carry. And then I have um, over-the-counter medication. And uh, something that you can think about carrying that's really important to carry is uh, diphenhydramine for allergic reactions. So we talked about the EpiPen, but we, we um, if you don't have access to an EpiPen, having diphenhydramine is important. And also uh, looking through this and making sure that you've got um, some j just basic medications that you need. If you're doing extended trips that are um, out in remote areas, then you wanna make sure you've got the medication that you need uh, to take care of your guests. And then the rest of this uh, down here on this end is really just optional things that you can carry. Um, I, if I'm doing uh, expedition type things where I'm going, you know, way away from definitive care, then again, Adventure Medical Kits, they make this product, it's for uh, dental emergencies. So you don't really think about that, but if you're way in the middle of nowhere and somebody loses a filling, uh, these things are, are, are golden. And then also the last thing that I have in here is uh, diagnostic. Uh, this is maybe able to get somebody's temperature to be able to take um, a blood glucose level so that we can see if somebody's blood sugar is low. So those are some things that, um, that we carry, that I carry in my first aid kit. And again, I can take these things out, pare them down to really small and get them into a, a, a smaller container. Um, at Solo, we have a, a first aid kit list that we hand out to our students. Um, we'll make that available in the comments below for you and give you access to that. It has some great, great things on there that you can uh, add to your first aid kit. So as, you know, uh, again, uh, great bag, waterproof, uh, very, very strong. It's not going to tear down in the, in the back country. Individual bags that are, again, adding to the waterproofness, but also allow me to get into this bag, find the materials I need, and build everything from a full big kit like this all the way down to um, a small kit for, for hiking and backpacking, or even a smaller kit for, for mountain biking. So just the organization of it and the way that it works, um, having something like this is big to take care of your, you, your family, and having it in your car is great, and then being able to pare that down uh, really small. Um, with all this being said, the best first aid kit in the world cannot, um, you know, cannot make up for no training. So our big recommendation is that you know, people go out, they get CPR, CPR certified, AED certified, get some first aid training at minimum. If you spend a lot of time in the outdoors, you know, take a wilderness first aid. If you're a trip leader and you're responsible for carrying a lot of people in the backcountry, go get the training for a wilderness first responder. Uh, you know, you can really uh, help somebody. Uh, you can have the best first aid kit in the world. It's not going to do any good without, without that uh, training. The second thing that I would say is, is planning. Um, I used to teach survival school, still teach survival school at the Nanahale Outdoor Center. And a lot of that is about planning and about avoiding risk in the first place. So having some backcountry skills, some backcountry knowledge, um, learning how to deal with groups out in the backcountry and to keep them safe, that will help you avoid any type of problems in, in the backcountry. We do, um, one of our clients that we have is a large, large university that has an outdoor rec program. As soon as we started teaching classes for them, they saw their accident rate decline a lot. And it was just because of having that awareness, knowing what could possibly happen and having some planning, have some skills, that they started having less accidents to begin with. So if you're interested in classes, uh, we teach them at the NOC through Solo Southeast. Uh, we'd love to have you in a class. Uh, again, in the comments, we'll link down some additional resources for you for those classes. We would love to see you. Also know that we're always uh, available as a resource. Uh, call our offices. Any of our instructors are happy to speak with you if you have specific questions about first aid kits or trip planning or anything like that. Just know that we're always here for you. Thanks, and I hope you enjoyed this, and be safe.